Hey everybody, I'm back with Heidi. So you've been getting a lot of questions about tourist visas. Yeah, I think what we haven't covered on our, our visa uh, talk here is what happens when you arrive here in the Philippines and what happens if you've overstayed in the Philippines. Yeah. And so what, what happens, you get off the plane, what happens? Mm. You get off the plane and if you haven't applied for a visa at the Philippine consulate in your country of origin, you normally get a 30-day stay here in the Philippines. You get a visa on arrival, especially if you're part of the countries that have visa on arrival here in the Philippines. And that's most of the Western country, Canada, U.S. Yes, correct. That's most of the Western countries. So after you arrive, you get a 30 days. And then we normally recommend our clients to uh, extend your visa one week before it expires. So say you arrive on uh, January 1, so extend it on the last week when your visa expires. Yeah. And then I want to take you through what happens when you extend. So first extension is normally 30 days. So January 1 to 30 and then 30 to what 30 days after your extension. Second extension is two months. You can actually get two months. But on your second extension, this is normally where you get the ACRI card. So I've been getting a lot of questions, but how do I get an ACRI card? What do I do? <laughs> you need that for a bank account and yes. many different things you need the ACRI mm -hmm. card. So the ACRI card is actually what we call an Alien Certificate of Registration I card. So it's your information card here in the Philippines. So you can do a lot with this. Um, it normally takes, if you're in Manila, one, uh, one day, and if you're in Cebu, normally one month. So you get this card, which is your identification card here in the Philippines, and you can use this to open a bank account in the Philippines. Yes. Yes. But I would recommend uh, having a friend at the, <laughs> at the bank that you're going to open because some banks actually don't accept it when, you know, you haven't had, you haven't stayed in the Philippines for long. So I would suggest at least four to six months of stay in the Philippines before you can open your bank account. But when you arrive and this is your plan, go to the bank manager and say, hey, I plan on opening a bank account. Can you possibly help me? Can I get your number? And so that builds a relationship with you and the bank. I know when I applied for my bank account, mm -hmm. I had a two-year lease. I just signed the lease. Mm. And that was like relief to the manager for all yes. the excuses they were going to come up with yes. by me showing them that lease that mm. I had for two years with an address, local address. Then she smiled, took a copy of it, and mm -hmm. I got my bank account. So Yes, yes. So having a residency here in the Philippines actually helps. So like you said, uh, having a lease contract or a purchase of a property actually helps you uh, tell the bank that, oh, okay, this person is staying here. Because what they don't want is you open a bank account, you make it as an offshore account, <laughs> and you funnel things there that we don't want. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, somebody asked me a question. They said that they had a plane ticket going back, and it was on day 65. They've mm -hmm. been here 65 days. Yeah. And they were worried about getting an extension. Is mm -hmm. there ever a reason someone doesn't get the extension? As um, long as you're being a good boy and you don't do break any laws? Yes, so just be a good boy and keep your tourist visa extended. Don't commit a crime because that will be uh, uh, very bad on your records and that will actually make you, um, you know, it's possible that you could get blacklisted, it's possible that you can get a record at immigration where you're delinquent. And what happens with that is you may not allow, you may not be allowed to come back to the country anymore. You get on that blacklist. For yes, that. yes. But if you come as a normal person, you come here as a tourist, mm -hmm. and you're on day 50, mm -hmm. and you're going to stay 65 days, mm -hmm. you just have to go and get one more 30-day extension. Yes, exactly. Two. Just make sure that your tourist visa is extended up until you leave the country. Um, it's okay if it's like a few days delayed; they don't really mind that but just make sure it's on the dot when you're gonna leave the country. Say you leave on the 25th and then your visa expires on the 26th, that's fine. But if you leave on the 25th, your visa expires on the 24th, that's also fine. Just a couple of days is fine, but don't let it last for a month, a week. Um, just keep your visa updated. You so mm -hmm. after the six months, you mm -hmm. go through the period and you're at the six months. Yes. And you're gonna, you wanna leave, uh, we have to do, um, exit clearance yes yes you actually have to do an exit clearance so if you've stayed longer than six months or six months you actually need to get an exit clearance so for this one you actually need personal appearance at the Bureau of Immigration so just ask them you'll fill out a form uh, bring your flight ticket and then ask them to do an exit clearance so this exit clearance will 
you will not be allowed to exit the country if you don't have an exit clearance. They're so. checking to make sure you're not wanted. Yes. You don't know anybody filed charges against you yes. or for money or mm -hmm. uh, unpaid rent. Uh, yeah. And I was told you should file for that two to three weeks prior. Yes, two to three weeks prior. Or if you have a flight ticket and it's urgent, they will actually prioritize people who have a flight ticket. But, but they're only good for X amount of days, right? One month. It's good for one month. Yeah. Okay. Now, I've been a bad boy. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't extend my visa, my tourist mm -hmm, visa, mm -hmm. and I want to leave. Yeah. And they have a term for that. Yes, yes. It's called overstay. And it doesn't sound good, but a lot of people overstay? Uh, a lot of people overstay. We've had people who've overstayed. I think the longest overstay I've ever experienced was 15 years. 15 year overstay. That's 15 hiding. Years. That's hiding. Yeah, that's <laughs> hiding. I won't say who, but this is actually a common thing here in the Philippines, especially if they come here and they're not really prepared. And they think, ah, oh, the Philippines is just, you know, backward the, country, don't know nothing. Yeah, don't know nothing. Um, and then you have to, yeah, you have to be, you have to worry about that because we're actually um, making our systems online now. So everything is, you know, streamlined. So I wouldn't, I, Please don't do it. Don't do it. Have, you, have you been able to help anybody that's overstayed? Yes, of course. So during the pandemic, actually, there were a lot of expats who couldn't leave the country, even when they wanted to. So a lot of them reached their three years uh, max. And then if you overstay on that, you actually need to file a motion for reconsideration. Yeah, so this motion for reconsideration is actually when, I don't know, you, if you stayed for lo overstayed for longer than six months. So you have to file this motion with the Bureau of Immigration stating why you overstayed. And mind you, it has to be compelling because there are two things that could be the outcome of this. Number one is you get an order to leave. And once you have this, you have a record already. And this can put you in the blacklist or exclusion list. And then number two, you get your um, uh, MR approved, which is they will give you 120 days to fix your visa. So either you leave the country, start all over again, or you find a more permanent visa, which could be, you know, if you're married to a Filipina 13A, which could be SRRV. So it, you, they just, they're just asking you to fix your visa status here in the Philippines. Now, if I just tell them I didn't feel like it, <laughs> it was too far to travel, or yeah. I didn't have the money, yeah. are those compelling reasons? No. <laughs> so it has to be more than that. Um, let's say you got sick, um, you couldn't travel, uh, you weren't, um, don't, don't never say you weren't feeling it because that's not a valid excuse. So the excuse needs to be valid. And so medical is a good excuse if you have doctor, medical, you know, yeah. hospital records or a bill. Yes, from the, yes. But it, could, it can't be a bill from a year ago and you've been well for that year. No, no. Is so there financial penalties yes this. so I've calculated this so for overstay you need to pay arrears and express express lane fee arrears is basically 15,000 um, uh, express lane for this for regular 9a processing it's a thousand but for express lane for this is 10,000 pesos then penalty is every month that you've overstayed is 1830 pesos plus the update of your visa so if you've overstayed for 15 years like my client that's a hefty amount of money. So it's over over fifty bucks a month. Yes. Plus yes. that two hundred dollars, that ten thousand uh, peso penalty. Yeah. So just to try to save money and wait till it's time to go and go, doesn't work. Doesn't and, work. And eventually they'll catch up with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you really can't just show up at the airport and get on a plane. No, you can't. You know, so guys, mm -hmm. stay on top of this. And if you are in trouble, seek help. It's better the the sooner you start reaching out for help the sooner you'll get over this hurdle. Yes. And if you just let it go and go, um, it's like the the IRS, eventually they're gonna find you. Yes, exactly. And I know a lot of expats are just scared because this was one of the reasons why the 15 year client that we dealt with, because yeah. he was just scared for um, uh, the people would find out he overstayed because people could report him. So um, honestly, uh, it's better to deal with uh, an agency to do it because we can advise you on how to go about it. And of course you're protected with um, client um, a privacy policy. So we won't tell anyone that you've overstayed. You're all good. <laughs> Can you go to jail for overstay? If you if you say you're arrogant and mm. when you go in and you try and leave the country and you're mm. overstay yeah. and you yell at an immigration officer. <laughs> 
No, but you can get deported, well, which they'll get put you in a holding cell. We could be in jail. <laughs> you want to be in jail? jail. The, you want to be in jail in the Philippines? <laughs> holding cell or not, it's jail. Yeah, it's jail. So, yeah, don't do this. Could potentially you're gonna get deported at some point. So you're supposed to be in the country and have some uh, means of support. Yeah. You know, either 800 a month or a thousand a month. You know, uh, and you're here on a tourist visa, so they don't don't expect you to stay forever mm. uh, they're kind enough to let us stay the three years mm. uh, but overstay many I've heard many bad stories not mm -hmm. just from Heidi but some people who have done it themselves and if they had one thing they can go back in time and do is pay their immigration on time yes yes exactly. being a week late is no big deal you know you're gonna pay a small late fee mm -hmm. and go on with your life yeah exactly hiding from it and having a build up for 15 years um, it has to be eating somebody inside knowing that they have this against them. Yeah. 100%. What's the other bad thing? What's the other thing you, on your tourist visa mm -hmm. that you don't do? Uh, I know they want you to give them a contact number, an address. Mm -hmm. Do they really check those? Um, I don't think so, but I think it's going to get to a point where they're going to check. Because yeah. on your ACRI card, you actually have an address. Now, if you ha want to change your address, actually, if you have a valid visa, you actually need to file for a change of address. Um, they actually check your birthday. It will be based on your passport. So this is the fear. You, all your information is with them. So if they find you, then that's going to be the problem. Um, they also have your contact number. They also ask you for references. Um, so at some point, there's going to be no escape. There was, um, I was in the immigration office in mm -hmm. Dumaguete once. And the guy in front of me started giving the lady a hard time. She wanted a contact phone number. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I don't have a phone number. Yeah. And then she asked, well, I need a, an address. Mm. And he goes, I don't need to tell you where I'm staying. Yeah. And after about five minutes of this, and then the, the head of the department came out. It was a man in a uniform. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if immigration has their own uniform. Mm -hmm. And he just handed the guy back his passport and said, denied. Yeah. You can actually you can actually get denied. Um, I know in the Western countries your address is protected, but because you are coming to our country and we require you to have the, your address here in our country, then of course you have to comply because you're bounded by the laws and the policies of our country. So there is no point in arguing with an immigration officer. I'm going to give you a little tip. Give them the address of a hotel. Yes. And the hotel's phone number. Yes, that also worked. Better than giving them nothing and arguing with them. Yes, yes. Because you've stayed somewhere. You live somewhere. Your bags are somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the province, I remember when I was staying outside of Dumaguete, mm -hmm. they just asked for like a landmark, something mm -hmm. close by. Yeah. And I told them the name of a restaurant. She looked it up. Mm -hmm. And then she just wrote the Barangi that it was in. Yeah. Barangi so-and-so in Dumaguete City. And that was my address, and they mm -hmm. accepted that. Yeah. Yeah, that helps. That, that helps, helps, Mike. Me. That's actually acceptable. Except, now, <laughs> you have a new office opening up. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about this new and improved office for uh, C&G Consulting. Yeah, we're actually located in a very perfect location. It's where immigration is at currently. It's also where the Department of Foreign Affairs is at, uh, Land Transportation Office and the Bureau of Quarantine, which are all agencies that you will be needing to process any type of visa. So we will be located, we're still constructing, so this will be open on February 15, hopefully if the construction does it right. So we will be located at the fourth floor um, near the food court. Uh, that's the Robinson Mall. And that's the Robinson's Galleria Mall, yes. Robinson's Galleria Mall yeah. in February. You know, Phil Philippines, everything's on time, mm -hmm. so there's no chance construction will be late. Yeah, so I hope our contractor said it will be done in one month and one week, so. You're given two weeks. <laughs> I really two weeks. I, I hope we get it constructed. But yes, guys, we will have, we have a new office, and I hope if you come to the Philippines, you'll come and visit us. Uh, if you have any questions, you just wanna chat, you just wanna check in with me on advice or anything, you're very much welcome. If you set an appointment, I'll be, I'll be available for you. Heidi, I've left all her contact information in the description below as always. Remember, she has a free consultation up to 15 minutes for people who have questions. Send her an email or go on the website. There's a questionnaire. What do they fill out on the website? Uh, it's, a, it's a form. It's a, our uh, website, cgconsulting.ph, and you just click on uh, book a free consultation. There's a form there that asks for your name, email, number, 
and then your schedule where you want to talk to me. And it'll be you or one of your friendly staff? It's me. It's me, she <laughs> it's says. It's me. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>